Welcome back. In the last video we did a quick overview of the second module and in this lesson some of the things you will learn are what OSINT is. Then we're going to talk about what is the difference between information and data because they are an essential part of any investigation. Then we will see where can we find an information and we will go through the internet structure since it is considered as our main source of open source intelligence. So, what is OSINT? Except it's an acronym that has two interesting words in it. The, the word open and intelligence. I took two definitions of OSINT and the first one which I like the most comes from Wikipedia. And I think that maybe best represents the open source intelligence definition. OSINT is data collected from publicly available sources to be used in an intelligence context. I think that in this definition the term context is the most important one because data as itself is nothing, actually pretty worthless, but when you put it in the right context it automatically becomes information that has a potential to be extremely valuable and let me show you with an example what I mean by that. Now I will tell you the difference between information and data with an example. I will tell you a few numbers. Two, 3, 4, 7, 8, 43, and 50. Do these numbers mean anything to you? These numbers that I have just listed, we can look at them as data, just like words, letters, different characters. There are some random values that I have just made up, but what if I told you that they were the next winning lottery numbers? Now, this data becomes information and it has a much bigger value. And this is the main difference, the context. When you put data in the right context, it automatically becomes information. The other definition that I have used for defining OSINT derives from the US Department of Defense, which states that OSINT is pr uh, produced from publicly available information that is collected, exploited, and disseminated in a timely manner to an appropriate audience for the purpose of addressing a specific intelligence requirement. Since English is not my first language, the word uh, disseminated caught my eye. I looked it up in the OSINT context and realized that it was basically reporting, which is probably the hardest part of OSINT. Before we continue, I would just like to share a fun fact, actually a sci fact as I like to call it. When you put OSINT in Google Trends with a historical view, how does that term, term uh, perform over time? You can see that in the last five years the usage uh, has started to grow. Just a little food for thought. Try it. As I have previously mentioned, the word open uh, in OSINT is often getting people confused because when you say open people tend to think it means free. Well in this context open does not mean free. As an example, you plan to gather publicly available information but with the use of some tool that you are going to purchase. So when you look at it that way, the data and information that you gather maybe are uh, coming from a free source, but you use the tool which you have paid. And also I have to mention that open does not relate to open source software in any way. An important thing to say is that open also refers to overt publicly available sources, as opposed to covert sources which are hidden and confidential. The last bullet on this slide is tightly connected to our OSINT investigations, since we will gather almost all of our information from the internet, and that's why we can freely say that information is everywhere. Actually, enormous amounts of data are all over the place, but where? I will show you an illustration of the internet, which maybe you have seen before, since it is a pretty popular analogy of it. In the next slide I will show you an il illustration of the internet which maybe you have seen before, since it is a pretty popular analogy of it. So where can we find all that information? Uh, as I've said I will mention now the iceberg internet analogy. This is pretty cool and I think it really points to the merit of it. People often confuse the terms like the Internet, WWW, Deep Web and the Dark Web. Those terms are related, but they mean different things, so I would like to demystify them for you now. 
If we look at the internet, we can say it is a physical connection that is consisted of all the computers around the world and we look at it as the hardware layer or a, or a big machine. On top of that hardware layer, there is the software layer, which we call the WWW, or the surface internet. This is where we go to different websites and search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo, and so on. It basically means that WWW is the type of software that runs on top of the internet, the hardware. And all of that makes about 4% of total pages available. This sounds wrong, doesn't it? Well, I also thought that to myself, but when you hear what is the deep web, it will make sense. The deep web, which is below the surface on the picture, it basically, it's basically all the content that the search engines are not allowed to see. Those areas are usually password protected and search engines can go in. As an example, take Facebook. How many content is password protected? A lot. All the profiles and pages, right? The deep web also consists of all the archives, medical documents, legal documents and many more which are, which are all password protected. When we get to the dark web, which is on the bottom of this picture, with all the scary things, then we change the software that runs on top of the internet. It is not www or the web, rather onion pages which are accessible via specialized browsers like Tor. Dark web is usually linked to criminal activity and illegal marketplaces, but both of them serve as a privacy preservers and that is pretty discussable since there are two sides of that coin. I won't go that technical into it, but I encourage you to learn about it since you will probably use it in your tool arsenal for your OSINT investigations. Okay, where else can we find information? Next, there are traditional mass media sources like television, newspapers, radio. Let's say you read about something in the newspapers. You could also check other media sources like television to maybe double check the information you have learned. Also listed as potential sources are books, maps, journals, conferences, brochures, annual reports, different publications, but I have also listed stickers. Uh, actually a car sticker and I would like to show you an example about it from the information gathering perspective in the next slide. This is the baby on board sticker. I will only briefly touch on this. Here is a real picture of a car's rear end uh, which I took a while ago and just for you to know why is it in creation. A baby on board sign on a car could elicit one or more responses. It could stop a criminal from targeting the house of fear of waking up the baby. Actually, as you can see on this sticker, we know that the target has probably two little children, one, one boy and, and one girl. Also, you immediately know their names. Peter Wautu means Peter in the car. And based on that all information, someone could do a very good pretext for a social engineer attack uh, via email, since the bad guys know the target's family situation. In my opinion, those stickers are pretty much unnecessary and I do not recommend using them. Just as uh, some additional information, uh, there are also photo and video metadata. This could be a very valuable source of information. Actually, for example, you took one photo and when you look at the photo's EXIF data, the metadata, it could contain all kinds of information besides what is actually in the picture. Information like when was it taken, with what kind of camera, uh, what were the technical properties of the picture, and also where was it taken. You could get the exact coordinates, coordinates of the location, look it up uh, on Google Maps and compare it to some other sources. If your contact is to validate was the person from the picture really there at that time, this could may potentially make a good case. In this lesson, we went over the OSINT definition, learn what is the difference between information and data, where can we find all that information with an interesting example. And we went over the internet structure, which includes the surface web, the deep web and the scary dark web. In our next video, we will talk about the OSINT types, so see you there.